Okay, thank you. Um, so, the destruction of the Jewish population of Vienna in the period of national of the National Socialist reign of terror is the most salient common motif in post-war Austrian Jewish literature. The references to Vienna in this literature are marked by the invisible ubiquity of this past, but also by a literary enactment of the difficulties to give it an appropriate place in the present. Places in the literal sense play a major role in this endeavor. The official lieu de mémoire, such as the monument on the Judenplatz, could you go one down, Tina? Yes. So this is the Judenplatz inspired this literature less than the everyday streets. So I'm talking obviously about the lit most recent literature where they could have referred to this. Then the everyday streets and squares that retain the past through their continuous yet changing presence. The poetic word is uniquely apt to simultaneously capture and to evoke what is no longer visible in what can still be seen. In naming these places and weaving these names into the texture of their literary language, several Austrian Jewish authors of the post-war generation conjure a city haunted by its history. Rather than representing these sites through mimetic depictions, however, these authors transform places into words that oscillate between various layers of meaning and turn these into carriers of a spectral memory, ein Geistergedächtnis. While Germany, especially after the student revolts in the late 60s, practiced an overt, if often problematic, Vergangenheitsbewältigung, a uh, mastering of the past, both Jews and non-Jews in Austria hushed up the past for a much longer time. It was not until 1986 when Kurt Waldheim, the former United Nations Secretary General, was unmasked for having covered up his activities during World War II, that Austria's role in Nazi crimes was openly discussed. The long silence allowed the unacknowledged guilt of the perpetrators and the repressed trauma of the survivors to linger under the surface. Ilse Eichinger, Doron Rabinovich, Robert Schindel, Elfriede Gerstel, among those, and Robert Menasse, among those Austrian authors of Jewish descent who poetically revisit the streets and squares of the Austrian capital and turn the encounter with these places into a soberly mournful revelation of a repressed past still lingering under the veneer of a city known for its charm and beauty. In the epilogue of his collection of short stories, Papirnik, Doron Rabinovich describes the past in terms of pieces of a puzzle that, and I quote, evokes names in us, the cities, the countries, the streets and pathways, the squares of being and the sites of death, the places of murder and the hideaways of survival. Is the Eichinger's collection of short texts about Vienna, Kurzschlüsse, short circuits, court circuit, is exemplary for this literary approach to the past, written mostly in the 50s, but revised and published in the past decade. The book consists of a compilation of very short texts that evoke a place or a street in Vienna and thereby offers a masterful and haunting guide through the city. The literary walk has the shape of a spiral it starts with city center. So, uh, Atinati, please uh, click down. And you can click down slowly so you get a few views of the Judenplatz in Vienna. Uh, but I will not refer to any of this, mainly for reasons of, uh, of time. I will concentrate only on two very small texts. Just go down until we get to to the text by Ilse Eichinger. Yes. Uh, should I leave it on in German or in English? I don't know. I don't know how, you know, how. Okay, let's leave it on in English because since I will speak English, I will refer to this. City center. 
something comes to mind. Oh, you know what? I will read it in German and you can follow with your eyes for those who don't understand in English. Stadtmitte. Etwas kommt in den Sinn. Jagt nicht und biegt nicht ein wie Wagen, die von Stephansplatz in eine Nebengasse wollen, sondern biegt ein wie die Straße selbst. Hat Knopfgeschäfte und Kaffeehäuser in sich, öffnet und verbirgt vieles, zeigt die Schaufenster und alles, was vorne liegt und lässt die Magazine im Dunkeln. Ich weiß von den Schokoladekuchen, von der Hochzeit des Joachim und der Anna, die sie vergessen haben, von der Judengasse, in die der Wind weht, so hilft uns der Himmel. Lasst doch die Sonne ruhig matter werden. Es gibt Wolle und Schuhe zu kaufen in den Seitengassen und eine Stiege mit Gras bewachsen führt hinunter. Die Orte, die wir sahen, sehen uns an. Start mit the ends on a pivotal sentence in which the Viennese places are personified. Their gaze links the past of something seen back then with the present of the writer and demand accountability. Like the other texts in the collection, the text appears obscure and hermetic, inviting the reader to uncover its textual spatial traces. The work of memory performed in this quest occurs in the verbal dynamic out of which these textual structures develop. Past and present are linked through a language that oscillates between showing and saying denotation and connotation, the literal and the figurative. Through this layered search for traces, the walk through the city turns into a resurgence of the forgotten that includes the present. Something comes to mind, etwas kommt in den Sinn. This something does, so we start with the city center. The, this little book is constructed so that it's Erster Bezirk, that's how it starts, and that's the city center. And then it goes Zweiter Bezirk, Judengasse, and so on. So uh, th that's what I meant by the spiral. Something comes to mind. This something does not appear like cars that drive by. It appears in the mind, in German, in Sinn which suggests both meaning and sensual perception. This something is not a transi transient apparition. It does not hurry by as time hurries and passes. It is something that remains, that stays with the street. The place, the Stadtmitte, is the Stephansplatz, the spot where the Jews had to clean the pavement with toothbrushes and were laughed at while doing so. Button stores, Knopfgeschäfte, refer to an opening and closing, to something that is kept hidden and open up. The coffee houses and the store windows lie open, while the storehouses, Magazine, in which the past is protected. One second, I just asked to be quiet here. Hello, Charlie. Sorry. Magazine also refers to weapons, the storage of bullets in a rifle, and evoke a violence that is no longer visible. From the outside, there is nothing to see but beautiful facades, celebrations, and delicacies. There is the reference to Viennese Sachertorten and to the wedding of Joachim and Anna, which they have forgotten. Anna is Maria's mother. Legend has it. Uh, Athena, can you go down? One more. Yeah. Legend has it that Anna brought Maria to Jerusalem. So, um, well, you see. Accordingly, the text reaches the Judengasse, a side street of the whole Markt. Mm -hmm which today houses textile and shoe stores. It departs precisely from the wedding fountain. So the opening that you see behind this uh, monument, this, this sculpture, this is the Vermehlungsbrunnen. And right behind it is the Judengasse. So the Vermehlungsbrunnen, which in the text, as it says, was forgotten at the time. It was indeed spared from Allied bombings. The Jews, to whom the alley's name refers, however, were not spared. The Judengasse ends in a stairway that descends and is thus open on both sides. Therefore, 
could you go please back up uh, a mo just a moment to the text? Yes. So you see, uh, Joach, of the wedding of Joachim and Anna, which they have forgotten, of the Judengasse through which the wind blows. So the wind blows through the Judengasse because it is open on both ends. And then it ends, and so heaven help us. Then just let the sun grow fainter. There is wool and there are shoes to buy in the side streets. And a stairway overgrown with grass leads downward. Now, please go down uh, four slides. Yes. One more. Yes. So this is the. these are the stairs going down. the the figure of the figure of speech from wo der wind weht from where the wind blows embedded in the sentence is an expression referring to a circumstance that renders the origin of a situation often of culpability recognizable this reference as much literal as it is proverbial combines with the double meaning of so heaven help us a natural phenomenon, the wind, the origin of the bombs and divine indifference. So this is heaven here. It's three things. It's the origin of the bombs. It is divine indifference and it is the wind that blows through the street, through the Judengasse. Divine and these which precisely did not help are linked in bitter irony. From the heavens, the text arrives at the sun. This helping heaven, however, does not illuminate, nor does it lift up. The stairway at the end of the Judengasse leads downward to the Morzinplatz and the Josefskai, where the Gestapo headquarters were located in the former Hotel Metropol. Can you go down one more? Yes. So this was, uh, this is now the Hotel Metropol. Near it, in the Marcarillstraße, is the Eichinger lived with her mother during the war, close to her grandmother who was deported and murdered. Grass grows over the stairs leading to this past. In contrast to the triumphant wedding fountain, these stairs were repressed and forgotten. These forgotten places look at us. As in the actual map of the city, the city center leads to the Judengasse. Could you go down one more to the second and final uh, text? There should be a text. Yes. Maybe one up, it's in English. But, uh, okay, yes, go one more up here. So, in and in German. I will read it in German. Katzenköpfe. Was unsere Straßen schmückt, sind nicht mehr die Schädel der Opfertiere. Unser Stolz ist vergangen. Hinter unseren Gängen ticken die Uhren ins graue Licht. Junge Männer fragen lächelnd nach unseren Wünschen. Da rauscht kein rotes Meer. Nur unsere Wäsche trocknet noch im Ostwind. Es ist geschehen, weil wir die Nacht nicht abgewartet haben. Als die Sonne unterging, sind wir ihr nachgezogen. Und hier ist die Stelle, an der wir müde wurden. Hier bauten wir Häuser. Hier ging die Sonne unter. Hier krümmten wir uns, ohne uns zu beugen. Seither wächst Gras zwischen den Steinen. These cobblestones, Katzenköpfe, could you go one down? So these are Katzenköpfe. They are old irregular paving stones, which, and now go one more down, please. No, uh, I no, no, up, go up, up. One more up. It was maybe before the texts you saw. Yeah, here. Thank you. Uh, which, as one can still see in the film, Der Dritte Mann, The Third Man, constitutes the pavement of the Judengasse. Yet the text leads beyond the words to the skulls of sacrificial animals. The mortal remnants of the victims, the last traces of their murder, have become invisible. So go please down, uh, first one. So, uh, okay, here. Yeah, yeah, no, the, to the text. No longer the skulls of sacrificial animals gracing our streets. Our glory has passed. So now go down, please. 
One more. Dieser Schädel der Opfertiere. The skulls also refer to ornaments that adorn the side facades of the beautiful building of the Gloriette at Schloss Schönbrunn. You can go down one more. Yes. So here you see Schloss Schönbrunn and one more. I have a close up of these of these here. You have these ornaments because in the text it says uh, uh, our glory is gone. So here's the Gloriette at Sch uh, Schloss Schönbrunn. This hidden reference to an architectural detail also leads back to language, to the word glory, which prepares the next sentence, our pride, our glory has passed. The passing of time of this pride appears in the image of the anchor clock. The stick the side. Go please one more down. Uh, here's the anchor uhr, where all the people of pride, the celebrities are walking by. So the gray, la the gray light stands against the glorious illumination, the illusion of the showy dignitaries that you see here. It is from the east that the Jews came to Vienna, got tired there and set up their tents, but no Red Sea is detectable here because the sea of blood associated with the Judengasse is no longer visible in the face of the smiling young men who now offer their goods. Only, as it says in the text, our laundry still dries in the east wind. Guilt was thus washed off after the war. You remember one spoke about the Persilschein, this questionnaire that was supposed to provide information about the shared responsibility in the Nazi crimes. Yet in alluding to the laundry detergent Persil, one only too often misused it in order to veil the culpability of the perpetrators. So in the Vienna of the 50s, and I close here, the laundry is still freshly cleansed of blood and hanging in the wind to dry. The text ends with a laconic sentence. Ever since then, grass grows between the stones. The stones of this pavement on which blood flowed become lasting witnesses that prevent the past from passing. The grass does not grow over, but only between them. To guard against forgetting is the Eichinger's text, holds on to the stones of this Viennese street. Her prose poems are themselves stones, like the ones that Jews put on graves instead of flowers to prevent the grass of forgetting to grow. They are stones of Vienna, and in the two minutes that I've left, I want to read to you the first few lines of a poem called Vineta Zwei by Robert Schindel. In Wien kenne ich dir jeden Stein, Paul Stein am liebsten, jeden Stern am lachendsten den Willi. In English, in Vienna, I know every stone. Paul Stein, the favorite. Every star I know, most laughingly, that of Willi Stern, who happened to also have been a friend of my parents. Uh, as to the Katzenköpfe, a uh, little anecdote on the corner of the Judengasse and the Hoher Markt. Uh, there used to be my father's fur shop, where there were, at the time, in the 50s, ausgestopfte Katzenköpfe in the window. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ilse Eichinger was inspired by those as well. Thank you.